reflecting on this gospel, the great German reformer Martin Luther wrote that it is, quote, the best and most comforting sermon that the Lord Christ delivered on earth, a treasure and a jewel not to be purchased with the world's goods. We might argue about its bestness, but no one can deny that these verses gave comfort to the apostles and continue to do so today for us. Growing up, I was familiar with the King James Bible. Its translation says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. This led me to the mistaken assumption that heaven was like some kind of real estate wonderland where each family would have an enormous house for itself. The translation we use is from the US bishops and it replaces mansions with dwelling place. I like that better. In the time of Jesus, it was rare for a son to leave his father's house upon marriage. Instead, an addition would be built to the existing structure. This would happen for each son's new family, and often they'd end up with a structure that had the different families living around a central courtyard. I think this is what Jesus was talking about. He wasn't talking about mansions all over the place, but about an intimate dwelling place that embraces all of God's people. We'll live with the Lord, not miles away in a celestial subdivision, but across the same courtyard. The New Testament describes heaven in several ways. It's sometimes called a country because of its size, or a city because of the large numbers, or a kingdom because of its structure and order. It's also thought of as a paradise because, it's, because of its beauty. That having been said, my favorite description of heaven is my father's house. It's where father, son, and spirit are together and where we belong. We don't need to think of ourselves as guests, but as family members who are completely at home. Jesus tells the disciples, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am you also may be. Jesus is returning to his father's house, but far from abandoning his disciples and us, he is as ever looking out for us and serving us by preparing a place for us. How consoling is that? I think the disciples must have been confused when Jesus told them, where I am going you know the way. Thomas, good old doubting Thomas, spoke for them all when he replied that they didn't know. Jesus' response is profound and deeply comforting. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's telling them and us, follow me, I'll show you the way. Today's gospel reminds us yet again that despite all the sound and the fury that surrounds us, we have no need to have troubled hearts. We can rely on the Lord to lead us to the Father's house. Praise God.